Hello and good morning friends. Hello and good afternoon friends. Welcome to the CEC Edisit Live Lecture. Dear friends, with our ongoing series on Sustainable Development Goals, uh, today we would be talking on a terrestrial ecosystem. Under this topic, today we are going to understand about uh, what ecosystem is, uh, what are the basic components of uh, ecosystem and uh, what, are, what is the importance of the ecosystem. We would be discussing on the importance part uh, in context to economic, ecological, social, health and well-being. And for this very discussion, we have once again with us in our studios, Dr. B. W. Pandey. Dr. B. W. Pandey is Associate Professor in Department of Geography, Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi. So, dear friends, let's welcome our guest, Dr. B. W. Pandey, under whose guidance we would be discussing on terrestrial ecosystem. Hello, sir. Welcome to the Edusit Lecture. Thank you, Geetika. Thank you very much. Hello, friends. Good afternoon. Today we are going to discuss the terrestrial ecosystem. This is the part of the series of the sustainable development goals. And many, many topics we have covered so far. Today I give my attention, focus on the terrestrial ecosystem. The components of the terrestrial ecosystem, functioning of the ecosystem and finally we will discuss over the what are the ecological importance, economic importance, social importance and very much importance of the ecosystem for sustainable development. So all these components we will cover throughout the lecture and Discussion through empirical evidences. I will give certain example so that it is easy to understand why terrestrial ecosystem are important for the livelihood as well as livelihood sustainability. Because we are talking over sustainable development goals. Friends, the very beginning very beginning of the terrestrial ecosystem, this term was first coined by, used by Professor Tansley, a British ecologist, in 1935. In 1935, British ecologist Arthur Tansley, who used the term ecosystem and later on it was described by the fellow ecologist, fellow geographers, environmentalist, the self-sustaining structural and functional interaction between living and non-living components that is called ecosystem. So it is the interrelationship, interrelationship between the living and non-living components of the environment. Friends, the ecosystem and it has a big arena, broadly ecosystem divided in two major parts, the marine ecosystem and the terrestrial ecosystem. Marine ecosystem because ocean covers the maximum geographical area of the earth. So definitely the size, functioning, depth, biomass, biota all dominating in ocean marine ecosystem dominating followed by 
terrestrial ecosystem, terrestrial ecosystem which include the land, continents. So almost 79% of the total area of the earth covered with the ocean, hardly 21% is the land. This component of the continents includes many relief features like mountains, plateaus, hills, plains, coastal areas. So every physiological features have separate kind of ecosystem. Therefore, terrestrial ecosystem itself is a vast variety of ecosystem, big diversity of the ecosystem. And then on the basis of life, including different components of flora and fauna, then you find again the terrestrial ecosystem are divided as a forest ecosystem, grassland ecosystem, desert ecosystem and covering to the relief and the combination of flora and fauna, then you find a distinct ecosystem like mountain ecosystem, hill, plateau ecosystem, desert ecosystem, grassland ecosystem and beyond that there is a big impact of urban ecosystem. So urban ecosystem have emerged as a major functioning of the terrestrial ecosystem. No doubt mountain ecosystem, desert ecosystem, grassland ecosystem, these are natural ecosystem. All these components developed by nature. So they are natural ecosystem. But urban ecosystem is more anthropogenic, less natural. But looking the criteria of sustainable development goals, looking the components of the terrestrial ecosystem, the urban ecosystem now playing a big role because not a single urban ecosystem can be established without ecosystem services. Every urban area needs water, fresh air, parks, garden, amusements, recreation, fresh air, fresh water for the sustenance of the life, for the health, health and sustainability, for the longevity of life, for the quality of life. Therefore, Without ecosystem services, urban ecosystem cannot survive. Friends, all these components include the terrestrial ecosystem. In this regard, in this regard, the terrestrial ecosystem, considering the grasslands, forest, desert ecosystem, also the aquatic. Friends, you know there are number of lakes, ponds, reservoirs, canals, rivers which are terrigenous. Terrigenous means land, continent. Those ecosystem which have been developed over land, over continent, they are terrigenous. So in the terrigenous, we have also the aquatic. 
rivers, lakes, ponds, and very, very important is the kind of ecosystem which develop in the shallow water where the combined flora and fauna which are land based and water based. So impact of land and water together that is called wetlands. Wetlands and you know wetlands are very very important for biological diversity. They are the abode of the biological diversity and they are very very important for ecology for ecosystem. Then you find the artificial artificial ecosystem which are anthropogenic ecosystem, man-made ecosystem. We have developed the agricultural land so-called cropland, farm, farmland, cropland, agricultural land, garden, aquarium, park, kitchen garden, and all many more which have been developed with the congenial relation with the nature. No doubt, it is initiated, it is developed by mankind, but without the congenial relationship with nature, it cannot be established. Friends, these uh, ecosystem have been a number of basic components that are very, very important to discuss, to know. The ecosystem itself is a complex phenomena, having number of systems and subsystems. For example, you must have heard you must have learned about the food chain and food wave. Food chain and food wave. Together known as ecological efficiency. Means transfer of energy from one traffic level to other traffic level. It is called as ecological efficiency. So ecological efficiency varies from place to place, varies from ecosystem to other ecosystem. So food chain and when the food chain becomes complicated, when the food chain, rather in other word you can say, when a food chain becomes cyclic, when the transfer of energy from one traffic level to other and while transferring it becomes cyclic, then it is considered as food wave. So food chain, food wave are the basic component of the ecology. To understand the ecosystem, terrestrial ecosystem, you must understand what is ecology. So ecology, the study of ecosystem, the study of the relationship between living and non-living organisms of the environment. The, what basic processes keep us and other organisms alive? This is very important to understand. What basic processes keep us and other organisms alive? 
This is the interactions, interrelationship. Plants, so called flora, requires sun rays. Sun rays for photosynthesis. for the production of energy and transfer the energy to the animals. So, number of animals will depend on the flora, so called primary consumers. Flora, vegetation, a primary producer and see this is ecosystem where a plant flora requires sunlight, water and energy, nutrients, humus, different kinds of minerals, fertilizers from soil. So flora also depends on the interactions of many components. And then fauna, fauna depends on the flora, fauna depends on the fauna itself. So overall it becomes very complex and complicated system and subsystem. Then you find what area the major component of the ecosystem belong to. To understand this, you can move the components of the ecosystem. It can be any ecosystem. It could be a forest ecosystem. It could be a grassland ecosystem. It could be a desert ecosystem. It could be mountain ecosystem, anywhere. Find the components of an ecosystem. So there are biotic components and abiotic components. So biotic components are living components and abiotic are the non-living components which you can say physical components, biotic components and abiotic components. Interactions, interactions between the two sets you can see. So biotic components include the species, species of the flora and fauna, population means the density, so the load of the living species on per square kilometer they call biota. So load of the living species called biota. The communities, when we say communities, population, it gives a broad view of the biological diversity. On the other hand, there is a big competition. The competition and predation among the species, among the populations, among the communities. And these biotic components based on abiotic components like water, nutrients, Topography, weather conditions, disturbances, all that. So, the biotic components passes through many climates. Say the broadly, you can say 
many succession. So land, a barren land, passes through various biological succession, biotic succession. And the nature of flora and fauna changes from one succession to other succession. That is called ecological succession, biotic succession. For example, you can see a field, a land which is barren. Then there develops some grass and the grass is the primary producer. It attracts primary consumers, so called herbivores. Friends, these herbivores are the transporters of the seeds. Transporters of the seeds of the plants, trees, species. So these primary consumers, animals, moves to the grassland area. Along with the animals, you can see number of birds are always associated with the animals. So number of birds, number of animals attracted to the grass. And there, once a time, the field had only grass. Then it was gradually, there is a growth of the plants, tree species, and after couple of decades, that grass become forest. Now see, from grassland to forest, it become ecological succession. And then forest from few species to multiple species, communities, diversities, mega biodiversity. You can see the ecosystem depends on ecological successions. Terrestrial ecosystem, any terrestrial ecosystem had passed a number of ecological succession, maybe it may pass a number of ecological succession in future. Therefore, therefore, the terrestrial ecosystem have been a long chain of the food wave and the chain of the food chain. Food chain and food wave are the major components of the terrestrial ecosystem. Friends, this terrestrial ecosystem combining the natural setup and anthropogenic setup having a big interaction. And these interactions, these interactions have number of functions. Say, for example, primary producers, the green built up complex having organic matter. With the help of the solar energy, minerals, and aerial environment, they convert the chemical energy of the food to kinetic energy. And finally, heat energy. Heat energy. Those heat energy are consumed by animals. Animals eat up plants and other animals as food. So energy is transferred through food to animals. Plants and animals then die. Decomposers act on their dead bodies and decompose in carbon dioxide, water and minerals. Finally, 
it go back to the air, water bodies and soil from where they were taken back. So it formed a complete cycle. So transfer of energy from one trophic level to other trophic level, this is food chain. And when this transfer of energy becomes cyclic in the nature, then it becomes food wave. So friends, ecosystem have complex functions of the food chain, ecological efficiency, all these components I hope you can understand. And in, this, in the next part, we'll discuss the importance of the ecosystem and detailed about the each and every components of the ecosystem along with their importance. Thank you very much for patience and listening. Terrestrial ecosystem or the ecosystem which is confined on land, continents. This ecosystem can be as big as a continent. Whole one continent can be one ecosystem or it may be as small as an island. A small island, say Australia, Australia itself is an ecosystem with diversity of ecosystem, continental ecosystem. Also, its coral islands, Tasmania islands, the number of islands, small islands could be an ecosystem components of the ecosystem. About 28 percent of the entire world's ecosystem. See the overall the covering the biota, biomass, forest, all that. Because number of shore lines having delta estuaries, also having the com combined of the influence of the marine and the influence of the terrigenous materials. Friends, covering the, covering the ecosystem, terrestrial ecosystem, it is very, very important to know about the pyramid of the terrestrial ecosystem. Pyramid of the terrestrial ecosystem, and you see, is very simple. 
it it is a simple pyramid and it may be a complicated pyramid you can find that pyramid of the terrestrial ecosystem it includes basically it begins with the producers and you know who are the producers producers who are depend on air water sunlight nutrients minerals so called flora vegetation plants and grass together called vegetation so when a vegetation is a common word but when we say a forest grassland so these are the parts of vegetation like when we say tundra tundra is simply vegetation it is grassland tundra means a kind of geographical space a kind of geographical area a kind of climatic conditions extreme climatic conditions where growth of the trees are not possible therefore tundra or timberless not a single tree so that is only grass tiny lichens mosses sedges seasonal grass that is vegetation but when we say forest then it's a kind of vegetation which essentially includes timber species means trees you can say taiga taiga is a forest vegetation megathermal vegetation equatorial vegetation monsoon vegetation these are forest vegetation you can find big size of trees like banyan trees people trees mango trees neem trees all that big size of timber producing species so there that vegetation called a forest whether a grassland or a forest together so grassland and forest means timber together known as vegetation so vegetation is the primary producer it produces energy by photosynthesis consuming the the insulation air nutrients water it produces therefore it is called producers this is also can say primary producer then the number of herbivores which are phytophagous means those animals and birds so called fauna so faunal species depend on floral species they are phytophagous herbivores they consume vegetation and then predators predators so called carnivores those animals which do not eat vegetation do not eat flora 
No, they do not eat grass. They do not eat, they get leaves. So they basically depend on flesh, meat. They are called predators. So they consume, they consume herbivores. So herbivores, animals like cows, buffaloes, bovines, goats, sheep, rabbits, so called. And all these are consumed by predators. You can see, you find the big chase in savanna. Number of hunters in megathermal forest. It's a savanna, land of big game hunting, where predators chase the herbivores. So carnivores chase the herbivores. And then the scavengers, omnivores. So kind of system, subsystem, which are not only depending one over the other, but also one depending on all others. For example, man. In our society, there are number of people who are so called pure vegetarians. They do not eat animals. So they are vegetarian. There are people who are non-vegetarian. They eat mutton, chicken, fish, and other meat products. They are non-vegetarian. Where you can find most majority of the people who are based on both. They eat vegetation, vegetables, and also they eat meat. So for the vegetation, they are on the top of the pyramid. Top of the pyramid, man. Top of the pyramid who eat animals, birds, fish, and who also eat flora, grains, vegetables. So vegetables, crops, grains, these are primary producer. Right from the primary producer to herbivores, predators, all consumed by the man. So called omnivorous. Then the these group right from herbivores, carnivores to omnivores, these are so called consumers. So you can find on the left side the producers or the vegetation, the primary producer, then consumers who consume these. And from producer to consumer, there is a tendency, the tendency of energy loss increased from entropy. So there is loss of energy because you know very simple. The entire vegetation can't be consumed by the consumers. Even vegetation directly lost the energy and it will decay, decompose in the soil. Rocks, soil. So all the all the grasslands, all the forests are not consumed by the primary consumers. Similarly, all the herbivores are not consumed by the predators. Therefore, there is 
increased energy loss and they decomposes decomposes decompose right from the bottom of the pyramid to the top of the pyramid friends you can understand the terrestrial ecosystem ecological system as a indian philosophy indian mythology that five components of the life so called pancha tattva shiti jal pavak gagan samir so sky land water air fire all these are the pancha tattva and all the producers and consumer are made of panch tattva they decomposed they decomposed in the soil and the decomposers decomposers they compose it and transfer that energy to the soil so the producer consumers the function as a increase of the biomass while the decomposers decomposers reduces the biomass reduction of the biomass and finally finally the producer consumer and decomposers when all the three components are mixed means producers consumers and decomposers all the three linked with then then it is it becomes complicated so called cycle so called food web so here you can see the stairs beginning from vegetation to herbivores carnivores omnivores these stairs these stairs are food chain transfer of energy from one trophic level to other trophic level transfer of, of energy from vegetation to herbivores transfer of energy from herbivores to predators then transfer of energy from predators to the scavengers these are food chain and then when the decomposers bring them back to the soil and again the energy the chemicals minerals from the different stairs different chain come back to the soil then it becomes food web so friends food chain and food web are the important functions of the ecosystem so therefore ecosystem known as complex ecosystem now talking about the terrestrial ecosystem it's very very important to know there are different diversity among the terrestrial ecosystem and this diversity because of the ecosystem services friends i'd like to mention here very clearly when we say ecosystem services then it includes climatic conditions kind of air kind of gas kind of temperature kind of rainfall amount of water its consumption 
availability, potentiality, then its consumptions by the primary producers, then ecological efficiency. So, overall, these ecosystem services set up a biota, a biomass. Friends, biomass, biomass vary from one place to other place. Definitely, there are biomass variation at latitude called latitudinal variation. You can understand very easily that when we say terrestrial ecosystem, so terrestrial ecosystem, one continent is Africa continent. Another continent is North America. Eurasia. You cannot compare the terrestrial ecosystem of Africa with the terrestrial ecosystem of North America or terrestrial ecosystem of the Africa with the terrestrial ecosystem of the Eurasia because there are large scale latitudinal diversity. Latitudinal effect, effect on climate, the maritime effect on the climate and continental effect on the climate. So, if there is climatic diversity, definitely there will be biomass diversity, floral diversity faunal diversity. Friends, this is the reason that you can find on the continent, on the continent, the biomass divides terrestrial ecosystem in various components of the ecosystem. I would like to mention here as very important, professor is a scientist, is plant physiologist A. D. Condole. A. D. Condole in 1874, he had divided world vegetation zones on the basis of climatic conditions. Friends, you can understand the terrestrial ecosystem, when we say terrestrial ecosystem, you have to concentrate on the continents. To understand the continents, see continents have long latitudinal variations. So vegetation which are along the equator, so called low latitude, you know equator zero degree latitude. So, 10 degree north to 10 degree south of the equator called megathermal. High temperature throughout the year along with heavy rainfall throughout the year, no dry season. Therefore, megathermal forests with rainforest, broad leaves, evergreen, forest, dense forest because of high temperature, heavy rainfall along the low latitude. This terrestrial ecosystem is different when you go for the high latitude. So, high latitude, the latitude beyond 70 degree, 66 degree north, 70 degree north, 80 degree north those latitudes are extremely cold. This lack of temperature, the temperature is not able to support the growth of the flora. Therefore, 
you cannot find vegetation maybe few tiny grass in a particular season like a tundra so called cryophytes friends you can find there is a big difference big difference of the latitudinal temperature therefore the terrestrial ecosystem are divided in different components different parts say i had mentioned professor ad kandole in 1874 he had divided world into vegetation zones like megathermal along the equator zero fights ecosystem zero fights ecosystem along the desert area desert ecosystem mesothermal ecosystem microthermal ecosystem and hackistophytes ecosystem see having terrestrial ecosystem on the continent dominated by different temperature same thing in in 1900 ad a german climatologist divided the different climatic conditions based on the model of the kandole koppen vladimir koppen divided the world into climatic regions and it means of the same equatorial forest equatorial climate desert forest desert climate mid latitude forest tundra forest taiga forest all these terrestrial ecosystem based on the temperature friends these detail of the ecosystem along with the latitudinal and altitudinal will discuss will continue in the next lecture thank you very much if you have any question you are most welcome with this note thank you sir thank you so very much and uh, we would like to tell you all that we have a caller right now from uh, varanasi uh, pavan giri is calling us so could we have your question please mr pavan giri good morning ma'am good morning sir yes hello yes your question please ma'am ma'am if we harness non renewable source of energy so fastly then how the commitment of sustainable development goal will be fulfilled he is asking about uh, uh, if i am not wrong you are asking about uh, the non renewable source of energy yes ma'am if he, we harness so, so fastly then how will we say that uh, we will be uh, we will forward towards sustainable development goal Uh, his uh, question is regarding the uh, sustainable development goal if we are talking about the non renewable sources of uh, energy yeah giri ji uh, uh, listen carefully this talk about sustainable development goals very important to cover the renewable energies so what i'm talking about the forest different ecosystem services these ecosystem services are renewable ecosystem services my focus is what the world is facing deterioration of the resources both flora and fauna you know many species of flora many species of fauna have already been extinct we are suffering from biological reduction loss of biological diversity so my focus is for sustainable development goal it is very very important to use these ecosystem services as a renewable energy sources i hope you can understand definitely we also believe that mr pavan giri might have got an answer of his uh, question now sir as we have uh, some uh, minutes left over here and uh, we always talk about the climate change yeah. so how does climate change affects the ecosystem if you talk about yes every ecosystem had its own capacity of adaptation tolerance exposure so every typical kind of climatic conditions where flora and fauna exist they adopt the body respiration they adopt the kind of temperature and when there is change in the temperature then the flora and fauna have to go a long 
way for further adaptation. That is the process called acclimatization. So if those species which can acclimatize through the adaptation, they can survive. But many species who cannot acclimatize, they have not resistance. Therefore, they die. So any change in the climatic conditions, many flora and fauna become vulnerable. You know, you can understand very easily, a little change in the temperature, we can lose our biological diversity in the ocean like coral. Any change in temperature, salinity, there is a coral bleaching. And corals are the big components of the biomass of the marine ecosystem. So climate change is a big threat for ecosystem services for any kind of existence of the ecosystem. Definitely that's why we are stressing more and more on how to control yes. global warming so that yeah. uh, climatic conditions, uh, although they cannot be controlled, but um, uh, definitely we can uh, make, an uh, make an initiative uh, so that uh, it we It is could more important things. to reduce the impact. Exactly. That is more important to reduce the impact with the different initiatives and which is going on at the global scale to the local scale. Definitely it is we the human beings uh, who have to make continuous uh, attempts as uh, we are making attempts for you. Uh, we are arranging lectures for you on different topics. Dear friends, we believe that if, have, if you have liked this lecture on uh, ecosystem, then you can mail us at info.cc at the rate nic.in. We would love to have your queries, suggestions and feedback. We would be meeting again soon and would be discussing on more topics under the series sustainable development goals till then take care goodbye thank you sir thank you so very much thank you.